Is gold the right place to hide? Is there more to come? I, the bounce has been quite strong. Do you think we're done yet? We saw a lot of those macro headwinds starting to build and we were starting to look like we were going to get a retest of that 1800 level. But yes, it's been the resurgence in safe haven buying that has buoyed prices higher. What we tend to see when we have heightened geopolitical risks is that we have an initial rally as we see a move into the safe haven assets and the safe haven appeal. Um, but thereafter, we tend to see that move tends to fade. Mm -hmm. We saw a very similar price reaction um, when um, Kuwait was invaded as well. We, and we're, prices are currently trending at a very similar level um, to back then as well. I, I'm, Suki, it's great to see you. I should point out that you're looking at the gold futures contract for December. Spot gold is still at 1990, so not at that 2000 yet, but you can definitely see it getting there. Uh, Suki, great to see you. If I look at the curve, are, are we actually going to get backwardated here? Like, there's been a real re-rating right at that front end uh, in, in, in the last, like, month or so. Is that a possibility? If we see the gold market uh, moving into a backward-dated market, it tends to be short-lived. Ultimately, it's still the drivers around the macro factors that tend to be key in terms of the backwardation for the curve. So we're looking at the interest rates here. And currently, we should still continue to see a positive yield. So if we do see a backwardated curve, we think it's most likely going to be short-lived. Suki, who do you think is actually buying? Who, who, who's driving this right now? This is a really interesting dynamic in the market at the moment. We're not seeing ETF uh, holders coming into the market. In fact, we've continued to see huge net redemptions, and that has continued over the past week, even when we've seen this huge move in prices upwards. In fact, what we saw initially last week was short covering activity in terms of tactical investors, but towards the end of last week, we started seeing fresh long positions being established. So the latest data when it comes out this week will be key to track whether that momentum has continued we're also entering a physically strong period for the gold market, a seasonally strong period for consumption. Mm -hmm. So if we were had market we had price dips, we might have seen that buying come back. But central banks continue to remain strong buyers here as well. Um, why do you think that ETF gold buyers have been selling and not buying in this environment? This is a really interesting dynamic when we look at the flows. One of the analysis that we like to look at is the price points where ETF holders establish those positions. And we're not in loss-making territory at the moment. If prices dip below 1,800, we get another 100 tons that becomes loss-making, extra pressure to the downside. But at these price levels, one would look, be looking to be buying the dips, especially if you're looking to rethink the purpose of your portfolio, if you're looking for a safe haven asset and you're looking for a diversifier. But instead, the appeal of higher interest rates elsewhere, equity market performance elsewhere, has really weighed on the gold market. And as Guy mentioned, some of those key factors, the stronger dollar, high interest rates, have also capped gold's upside. Suki, is gold the right metal to own? Do I want to own silver right now? Do I want to own gold? Do I want to own some of the other precious metals? How should, you be, how should we be thinking about which metals we want to own at the moment, gold's the, the kind of the most obvious one, but is it the best one? It depends on which period we're looking at here. In the short term, gold, we think that could be exposed to further upside risk. But we think that the geopolitical premium that's been priced at the moment is likely to be short-lived. Mm -hmm. But beyond this going into the back end of 2024, that's when we think that we're more likely to see upside risk for gold materialising, when we see confirmation that the Fed is likely to cut rates and interest rates around the world are likely to start to ease. But if we're looking across the entire complex, we're seeing some huge diverging trends at the moment, whether it's a palladium market which is set to move into a surplus on a, on a serial basis, going into 2024 and beyond, whereas in contrast, metals like platinum and silver are more exposed to industrial demand growth driven by green energy and mm -hmm. battery electric vehicles. So we'd say on a fundamental basis, platinum is perhaps the one that looks like it has the most upside risk if we're moving beyond 2024 and into 2025, 2026, when we anticipate larger deficits for that market. But in the short term, gold is perhaps the market we need to be keeping an eye on, especially with its safe haven appeal. Uh, Suki, we um, had the data on um, uh, what China was doing with treasuries. And I'm wondering, as, they, as China needs to support its currency, et cetera, does gold get wrapped into that? Like, are they going to have to sell their gold holding to support their currency? I mean, the thesis 10 years ago for gold was that, hey, we're going to have a lot of central bank buying. Is that still the case? What's been interesting about the China market is that we've seen buying 
on almost firing on all cylinders, whether it's um, retail investment demand, whether it's jewellery demand, whether it's central bank buying. All end usages at the moment look quite strong. But of course, we're coming off quite a weak base from last year and the year before in terms of that retail appetite. But we are seeing a rebound in local interest um, in the gold market, whether that's on the back of concerns around um, the economy, uh, the economic growth not being as strong as what was anticipated at the start of the year, or whether that's concerns around other asset classes. But the fact that we've seen China's imports remaining strong in excess of 100 tons mm -hmm. um, for the bulk of the past year suggests that that demand growth, that that demand appetite is still very much there.